Hi guys, I'm Shane and in this video I'm going to show you some simple post-processing tips to bring your renders to the next level. I'm then going to show you how you can mock up graphic posters using your 3D renders. So let's get into it. So if you watched the last video, you will have seen how we made this render on screen here. If you haven't seen that already, I would go back and check that out. We've also rendered out the clown pass, the ambient occlusion pass, and the refraction pass. The clown pass makes it nice and easy to select all of our different materials. The ambient occlusion pass adds a bit of shading wherever parts come into contact. And the refraction pass can be used to brighten up some of our translucent materials. I'm going to change the blend mode on the ambient occlusion pass to multiply and on the refraction pass to screen. I'm then going to reduce the opacity of both of them until I'm happy with the result. And once I'm happy with the final image, I'm going to merge them all to a new layer. So I'm not going to break down every shortcut I use, but here's one you might not know. It's Control Shift Alt E and that will merge everything below it into a new layer. We're now going to use the clown pass to select all of the background. So with your one tool, select the entire background, return to your newly merged layer, hold alt and left click on create a new mask. This creates a mask of the inverse of your selection, meaning that we now have our syringe on its own layer with no background. You're then going to want to go into the mask properties and give your mask a bit of feather. This softens the edges of the mask. If you hold alt and left click on the mask, you can see what's happening when we add more feather. Next, you're going to want to add a curves adjustment layer behind our merged layer. We're going to create a slight S curve to control the midtones and the lights. The reason I like to do this on a separate layer behind the subject is I often find if we do it with the subject included, you lose a lot of the detail. We will be adding some adjustment to the subject and the overall image when we use the camera raw filter later. Next, we're going to add some lens flare. We're going to use it just to make our image that bit more dramatic. If you go into render, then select lens flare, it will open up another tab. This occurs in photography when you have a really bright light source. So move your cursor to where you've got a bright light source and adjust the brightness so it's not too high. You're then going to click OK and that looks terrible. But by doing this, we can undo the effect and apply it on its own layer. So you're going to Control Z to undo, create a new layer, fill it with black, go into your filters and click on the top there to apply the lens flare. And if we change our blend mode to screen, then we've got our lens flare on its own layer. This gives us more freedom and more flexibility with how we want to manipulate it. So we can rotate it, scale it, reduce the opacity, all without affecting the main subject of our image, which is the syringe. What I like to do with lens flare is put it behind the subject. I then like to duplicate it with Control J and drag this one in front of the subject. I can then reduce the opacity so that it's not so strong that it distracts from the main subject of our image. I'll then add a small amount of Gaussian blur just to take the edge off. Once you're happy with your image, we're going to merge all the layers into a new layer again. You're then going to right click and convert this new layer to a smart object. This will allow us to make any changes we want to the filters we apply to it. I'm also going to group all the layers beneath because we don't need them for now. You're then going to go up to your filters and select camera raw filter. This allows us to adjust the contrast, the whites, the shadows, the exposure, color grading and the sharpening of our image. Here you can see me going through just adding little tweaks to the whites, the blacks, the shadows and highlights. I'm then going to increase the texture, the clarity and the dehaze and this really brings our render to life. But you do want to use this sparingly because too much can go overboard. I'm then going to add a bit of sharpening and a vignette. When you're happy with this, click OK. The good thing about having this on its own layer is that you can reduce the opacity if you've gone a bit over the top. We're then going to add a color lookup. This will be used for color grading. This uses pre-made lookup tables to pretty much do your color grading for you. You can just cycle through until you see one that you like. Maybe change the blend mode. I sometimes use soft light or color and reduce the opacity so the effect isn't too extreme. But this is mainly down to personal preference. I settled on horror blue as I thought this worked quite well for a movie poster. 
I then add a selective color and set this to my blacks where I'm going to add a bit more magenta and cyan. I'm then going to reduce the opacity so this effect isn't too extreme, but as you can see, it just adds a bit of color to my blacks so they aren't so harsh. I'm then going to create a new layer and select my gradient tool. I'm going to make sure that it's set from black to white and draw out a gradient to create a vignette. I'm going to change the blend mode to overlay and reduce the opacity. This just helps to direct the eye onto the subject. We're now going to add the grain. To do this, we need a 50% gray layer. To add one of these, hold Alt and left click on the new layer button and set the blend mode to overlay. Make sure you tick the box which says fill with overlay neutral color. Then go up to your filters, noise, add noise and make sure it's monochromatic. Then reduce the opacity to a level which you like. Next we're going to add a little bit of dust. So find a black and white texture you like on Google, paste it in and change the blend mode to lighten. You're then going to go into the blending options and on the underlying layer, select the left slider. If we drag this more into the center, it will remove the texture from all the dark parts on the underlying layer. As you can see, this is quite harsh. So if you hold Alt and left click on the slider, it will break the handle in two. You can then drag the left side back to the left, which will smooth the transition, leaving dust only in the bright parts of the image like it would be in real life. You're then going to add a layer mask. Hold Alt and left click on the mask to see what's happening. Go up to your filters into render and select difference clouds. We're then going to increase the fall off, smoothing the transition between the two colors. What this will do is just create some variance in the opacity of the dust so it's not all uniform. You're then going to come out of this and reduce the overall opacity until the dust is barely visible. And that is our final render finished. Now all that's left to do is mock it up poster style. Merge all of our layers onto a new layer and create a new text layer and give it a title. I've gone with pandemic. Find a suitable font. I think the font I used is called DIN condensed. You can see here, I'm just playing around with the different sizes, different thicknesses until I settle on one that I like. I wanted to go for something that was quite narrow and took up a large part of the screen, but I also wanted the kerning to be quite close because I knew that I wanted to put a bit of the text behind the subject just to give the image that bit of depth. I'm then going to convert my text to a smart object so that we can add some effects. I wanted it to have a subtle ink bleed and a little bit of imperfection as this would tie in with the grungy nature of my image. To do this, I add a bit of Gaussian blur. I also add a bit of ripple. And then an unsharp mask. The unsharp mask works a bit like a threshold and by adjusting the parameters, you can control how much of the blur gets sharpened and how thick the overall type comes out in the end. You can see here, I go back and adjust my ripple because I felt it was too strong. Once I'm happy with my text, I'm going to go all the way back to one of our earlier masks. And with my one tool, I'm going to select all of the background. I'm then going to use this selection as a clipping mask on our text. This will place the text behind the subject. Lastly, to make it look a little bit more like a poster, I'm going to add a photocopy texture. This is one I just found on Google. You're going to want to import it, scale it correctly, and change the blend mode to lighten. I then like to duplicate it with Control J. You're then going to want to invert it with Control I and change the blend mode to darken. The black layer will lighten our dark colors and the white layer will darken our bright colors. You're then going to want to adjust the opacity until you get a look that you like, and then you're gonna to want to save it. This means that we can open it up in a new tab to mock it up. Then you're going to want to import your mockup. I got mine on freeject.net. Put this layer behind your image. If you then hold Alt, and hover your mouse in the line between the two layers, you'll see this little symbol appear. And if you left click whilst holding Alt, it will use the bottom layer as a clipping mask. Then scale down your image so that it fits the poster. Add a background of your choice. 
and then duplicate your mock-up with all the creases. You're then going to drag this on top of all of the layers and set the blend mode to multiply to get some of the nice shadows in there. Once again, reduce your opacity so it's not too strong. Now we want to add some of the highlights to our image, but we don't want to affect the overall brightness of our poster. So select your render layer, go into the blending options, and similar to how we did earlier, select the underlying layer slider, but this time select the right one. Drag it towards the center until you start to see the highlights coming through. Alt to left click on the handle to break it and drag it back to the right to smooth the transition. I'll then add a bit of Gaussian blur to the shadows and the highlights just to take the edge off. And that is our mock-up poster finished. You're more than welcome to add any more adjustments to the color grading, add more effects if you want, or even go back and add some more information to your poster. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, be sure to ask me in the comments below. Make sure you visit my website for free rendering resources and like and subscribe for more.